Okay, uh, today we're going to talk about my favorite subject, which is design. And we're going to talk a little bit about the elements of visual design and composition. Uh, there's a very good article that I have a link to on the lecture notes. Uh, and this is an article by Robert Bearden on composition and the elements of visual design. Be sure to go ahead and uh, open that link and read uh, that article, which will go over uh, many of the same things that we're going to talk about today. Now, you may be asking, uh, why are you teaching design? I took this sh sh class to learn Photoshop. Well, uh, what this class is really about is design and using Photoshop as a tool for design. Okay, and don't confuse the tool for the product because what we are actually producing is what we call design whether it's taking a photograph and doing some retouching to it and uh, making it more better or if you're taking and making an original design like our poster or our web page is that we are doing design and Photoshop is only just a tool to accomplish that uh, goal of making a pleasing design that communicates. Okay, so let's talk about all the basic elements of design. The very first and most basic element of design is the line. So if we come up over here and we'll take a look at this uh, uh, blank page here. And if the very first thing that I can do is I can draw a line on my uh, composition here. And this is a simple di uh, diagonal line, black line, on my uh, design here. And uh, even it being a simple line and not really communicating too much to us is that it does communicate a couple things. One of the things is that visually our eye is drawn to an endpoint on a line and when we take a look at this diagonal line is that it goes from here being off center and more toward the center and up and it this is what we call a natural sight vector is that this is drawing our eye upward and inward to the center of our composition here. Okay, so and so you can use lines as effective ways to steer the eye. If you took and made two lines here, it could be perhaps a road converging to the horizon or something like that. Okay, and so if we add a couple other lines to this uh, line here, and we draw them out here, we draw two more lines, and then when we've enclosed an area with these lines, it becomes a shape. And we can kind of define this more by giving a background here and then filling in the center. And now we have this triangular shape, which is our second element of design. So you basically take and you can use lines and shapes and place them within your composition to make a design. The next element that we want to talk about is form. And form is where we give a basic shape some definition. All right, And definition can be in the terms of uh, dimension, for example, is that if we wanted to uh, take this triangular shape and we add some light and dark to it and we come up with this, okay, simply by making one half of it white and the other half of it black, we end up now with that shape taking on the form of a pyramid. Okay, and if we did some other kind of shading, for example, I'll go ahead and shade this slightly different, take our triangle, basic triangle shape, and I'll shade that slightly differently. And now uh, what uh, uh, was a pyramid now appears to be a cone shape. Okay, and so by using the light and darkness is that we are giving our shape some form and some dimension. Okay, so you can use this, for example, these gradient fills uh, on your typography and something like that to give it more dimension and shape. 
Okay. And this also implies some other things in our design, even though we don't actually see them. As, for example, we have this light area on this cone, and we kind of suppose that our light source is up here, and it's shining down, and then our shadows are on this side here. Okay. And so, typically when we do a gradient, for example, is that we would do it from the light being on the top to the dark being on the bottom, because naturally light appears in the sky, and usually the shadows are on the bottom or something. Okay, let's go back over to our beard insight here. And after form, the next element that we talk about is color. And color is a very strong element, and is that we basically take our shapes and our forms, and we or even we can use backgrounds, which is kind of a shape and form in itself, and uh, use color to make it communicate. Now, there's several several aspects of color that we talked about earlier when we talked about, for example, the RGB and uh, CMYK color, and those elements are hue, value, and intensity. Okay, and we can use the word brightness for value, and it's an interchangeable term. It just means the lightness or the darkness of a color. And we also have intensity or saturation, which uh, uh, goes to the purity of the color or how much pigment or light of that particular color is. As, as for example, a pure red would be a more saturated color than something that had some gray added to it and perhaps made it a maroon. Okay, and we can take our colors and we can use them together in several different ways. Well, the most basic way is to use the same color and use different values and intensities of that particular color. And that becomes what we call a monochromatic uh, composition. Is that you can take uh, all blues, for example, and make a snow scene. And uh, use you know everything from a very very white and light blue to uh, a very dark blue. Uh, let's go down here. I've actually got an example of this here. If we look at this uh, photograph here of the pine trees in the snow, is that we are only dealing with blue as a color, and this is a monochromatic uh, color scheme. Okay, the next color scheme that we want to talk about is an analogous color and analogous from analog which means things that are like other things and so if we look at on our color wheel here and a color wheel is simply a pers uh, our uh, spectrum of light and colors and we've taken it and we've kind of bend it around it to form it into a circle and we can go around our spectrum of colors here on this color wheel and this order is pretty uh, absolute as is, is it's uh, from physics and uh, if we take colors that are adjacent to each other on the color wheel is we are using an analogous color scheme so for example we've got this green which is next to this light green or chartreuse which is next to yellow and so if we use those colors in our composition or our design and a lot of times when we're taking photographs we're designing by using the viewfinder. So that we're look, going out and we're looking at the world and we say, ah, this is a pleasant uh, picture. And we may or may not consciously decide that, oh, this is an analogous color uh, scheme. Or we may just take the picture and then later on we realize when we're doing our design that indeed that we are using analogous colors. So if we look at this photograph here, we've got yellows and greens in it, and it's a very pleasing photograph or composition. Okay, the next color scheme that we want to talk about is complementary colors. Now, complementary colors uh, complement each other, okay, and they are opposites of each other on the color wheel. So if we look over here, the opposite of this kind of uh, light purple is kind of this light green. Now, if we take uh, red and we go across the color wheel, and we find that green is its complement. And if you think about, for example, the Christmas colors, 
is that red and green are used together because they're complementary colors for Christmas. All right, and maybe if we're talking about Easter or springtime, is the colors that we might have uh, used are, for example, yellow and purple are very common colors for the Easter bunny and that sort of thing. And so these are very pleasing and strong and contrasting uh, colors and they complement each other, okay? And so we have, for example, here we have a yellow and a purple, nice springtime uh, theme here. And they actually kind of talk to these kind of things as we can kind of get a feel that if we're using the these oranges and blues here, as it might be kind of a summery feel or where you red and green might be Christmas or yellow and purple might be springtime and something like that. And so this is something to consider if you want to, having a hard time picking out colors to use in your design is take whatever is the dominant uh, color of your background and find its complement to use as your foreground color for maybe your title or something like that. Okay, if we take our color wheel and we divide it in half here, is that we have one half of the color wheel, which is what we call kind of warmer colors. If we talk about our reds and our oranges and our yellows over here, we have what we call our warm colors. And if we kind of look over here to our purples and our blues and our dark greens, is then we're talking more toward cold colors. And, you know, it's basically kind of the semblance with fire and the sun. We associate warmth with things that are kind of reds and yellows and oranges. And if we think about snow and cold and ice and uh, that, we kind of think in terms of blue colors. So if we want to give uh, our composition a colder feel, and uh, we might want to use blues. And if we want to use uh, more exciting, warmer colors, we might use these reds and these yellows. And then in the interest of contrast, we might want to use warm colors as a title on a cold background. So for example, if you were doing an advertisement for a ski resort and you had a nice uh, picture of the ski resort in the background of blue, you might want to use yellows and oranges to make that contrast for the title of the, of, the, uh, of the ski resort. And if we come down here and we look at this photograph here, is that we've got kind of warm colors here, we've got cold colors in here, and we'll notice that in this composition is that there's several things that are going on. Is our warm colors kind of tend to pop out into the foreground, and they are kind of more dominant colors than, for example, the cooler colors. And we usually think of cooler colors being in the background. And this has to do with having a blue sky on our particular planet. But uh, so this is another thing to kind of consider in using uh warm and cold colors is maybe you want to have your warm colors be the dominant color in the foreground. And you can also see here in terms of value that our cold colors are darker in value than our warm colors in this particular composition or photograph. Okay, another element that we want to talk about is texture. And texture is appeals to our tactile senses. In other words, it lets us know uh, how something that we're looking at is going to feel before we actually touch it. And so if we look at these uh, uh, photographs here, is that we can have, here's two photographs of rocks, but if we look at this one, we kind of know before we actually would ever touch these rocks, that these rocks would be smoother than this rock up here, this lichen-colored rock. And one of the things that it, that goes to this is the amount of contrast. So if we kind of look at this uh, photograph of the uh, lichens here and moss, is that we, we've got a feeling that these are rough because there's such a high contrast between the lightness and darkness here of the uh, shadows and the highlights. Now if we come down here and we look at this uh, uh, smooth water time-lapse photograph, is then it looks smoother because the colors are more smoothly blended together. Okay, and so you can use texture to communicate also within your design. For example, if you were doing a uh, baby lotion uh, composition, or an advertisement for baby lotion, is you want to use kind of smooth textures within 
uh, your composition. And if you were doing a, a movie poster about a serial killer, for example, you might want to use rough textures to kind of give it more of a gritty uh, feel. Okay, so that kind of covers the basic elements of design. And the next thing that we want to talk about is composition. And composition is how we arrange these elements of design within our composition. Okay, and there's several elements of composition. And if you read the Robert Bearden article, he uses some different terminology than we're going to use in this class, but uh, it describes many of the same uh, elements of uh, composition that we're going to talk about here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go over to my Photoshop uh, website here. And we, the terminology that we're going to use in this class, and we generally use it at Front Range Community College, to describe these elements of composition are contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity. Okay, if you get nothing else out of this class, I would much rather that you if by the end of class, knew all about contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity than if you, for example, knew a hundred keyboard shortcuts to use Photoshop. Because in the end, knowing these elements of composition and elements of design is going to serve you better in your career than learning how to use a particular tool. Okay, let's talk about the very first element of composition, which is contrast. Okay, we want to have our elements contrast with each other. And the reason is for uh, legibility and readability and communication. So I'd say, if we, for example, if we look at the word contrast on our page here, is that it's a dark color against a light background. And again, if we come up here to the title of our web page, Photoshop 1, we have a white against a dark background. Okay, and that's contrast, and that makes that readable. So if we come over here and we'll go back into our Photoshop document here. And if we come down here, and we have our a white background, and we bring up the word contrast, is that you can see that this is very readable, is that it's very easy to read. So if I take this... Uh, image here and I make it very very small even though because I've got such good contrast here on my type is that I can read this when it's very very small okay and so this is using value to contrast so in other words we have a light value as our background and we have a dark value as our foreground with the word contrast. And of course we could have done that vice versa. You could have chosen to use a black background and use white lettering against it and it's all very readable. Okay, or legible and it communicates well. Well, not only value, you can also use some other of our elements of uh, design elements of color. And for example, I'm going to bring up this contrast here, this red contrast, and I'm going to contrast this against a blue background and this light blue background is the exact same brightness value, if we looked at it in our color picker, as um, the red. Okay, so that these have both have the exact same uh, brightness value, but they have a different hue. And they actually just happen to be across from each other on the color wheel. And so this is a complement this red is the complement of this particular cyan kind of color. Okay, and so here we're using uh, hue as our contrast element. Okay, another element that we like a lot in visual design is repetition or rhythm. Uh, rhythm has been a part of human beings since we were in the plains of Africa and discovered that we could hit a stick on a tree and it made people dance. Okay, and so repetition and or rhythm is where we take our visual elements and we use equal spacing or equal sizing 
or something like that where it makes those elements uh, lets us know that those elements are related to each other. For example, if we look at just our headings here, contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity, is they're all about the same size and they're all using the same typeface and they're a repeated element and we know that these are basically headers. Okay, and the same thing as if we come over here and we look at these navigation elements on the side of this web page is that we have, they, they are repeated and so we know that they are related and is very visually appear, uh, appealing to us. Okay, let's take a look here at this. Uh, so if we come over here to the Bearden uh, website and we look at this picture of fence post. I mean, a fence isn't, doesn't seem to be the most exciting thing in the world to photograph. But if we look at this photograph, it's a very pleasing photograph. And the, what makes this photograph is the fact that it has rhythm and repetition in it with these uh, fence posts. And that makes that composition uh, pleasing to our eye. Okay, the next element we're going to talk about is alignment. And this also uh, applies to uh, the rule of thirds that we're going to be talking about here in a little bit. But if we take a look at the alignment in this uh, particular composition, which is the uh, web page, is that we have all of our elements that are similar to each other are pretty much aligned. So if we take our navigation elements that are all lined up here nice and neat, and we know that these navigation elements are related. If we took one and put it over here with a different typeface, and then one over here with a different typeface, uh, then that we wouldn't know that those all were buttons to similar material. And so by grouping these things together is uh, and lining them up is that we have, we know that those objects are uh, related and it's more of a pleasing composition. And so if we look at this composition here is that we line up, for example, these bars here. Okay, and uh, we have a balance between these two sidebars here in the center here, and we have a nice alignment between these two buttons here. Okay, and one of the things that we'll talk about is the rule of thirds here. And if we take a look at the, this header, for example, is that it's one third of the space, and then this is kind of two thirds of the space in the header. And and then we take a look at our columns here. So we have one that takes up about one third and then another that takes up uh, two thirds of the space. Okay. And so aligning things up makes them more pleasing for visual design. And finally, we want to talk about proximity. And items that are grouped together basically kind of uh, go together. And we know that those items are related to each other. So if I take a look at this header here, we know that these elements are going to be, we're going to be talking about them and they are related to each other. And if we take a look at our navigation here, it's all grouped up over here close to each other. And we know that those things are related. And so even if we come up here to our header on our web page here and we look at the Photoshop 1 and the MGD 111, those two are grouped together and they are uh, grouped together because they belong together. They have similar meaning or a similar use. Okay, and same thing over here. We have our home and resources buttons and those are grouped together because they do similar things. Okay, and we, when we kind of talk about alignment, kind of the a more, uh, one of the basics of design is what we call the golden section or the golden mean uh, or the golden ratio, okay? And this was um, kind of discovered by the Greeks and uh, it's credited to Archimedes. Whereas if you take uh, various elements within nature and uh, if you take something and you take a, let's say we take a box here and we double it in size and then we double it in size and then we double it in size and we double it in size. And if we double this in size uh, or area, as we come along here, is that we end up uh, kind of forming this shape. And if we draw a box around that shape, is that we end up coming up with divisions that are using a uh, three-fifths to two-fifths ratio. Okay. Okay, and so this ratio 
And this kind of uh, three-fifths ratio is what we call the golden ratio or the golden mean. And if we come down here and we look at this composition here of this leaf, and, we, and we've divided the uh, composition into uh, three-fifths lines, is that you'll see that this leaf uh, is here right on that three-fifths line, and that's a very pleasing composition. Okay, and then we also talk about the rule of thirds. Now, the rule of thirds is simply a simplification of the golden mean, okay? Instead of using three-fifths, which is kind of a difficult and cumbersome mathematically, is if we divide things into equal thirds, is that we end up with also pleasing compositions, and, uh, and it, it just uh, makes things uh, very appealing to our eye. So if we go and take a look at this photograph here, is that we can see that uh, our horizon line here, where the mountains are hit hit the sky, is right on this top two thirds line here, and we also have, like you notice, the bottom of this island here happens to be on the uh, bottom third line, and if we kind of uh, take and we divide our composition uh, vertically into thirds. You know, so we've got this whole third area, a uh, ninth of our composition that is a light color here. And over here we have a third that is completely black. Okay, and so these balance each other. And if you kind of know what the yin-yang symbol is, if you kind of look at this composition here, is it's kind of got that kind of yin-yang thing going on where the light colors kind of go into this third here and the dark colors kind of flow up into this third here. And then if we kind of took our center third and we drew a line right across the center, it's kind of equally balanced between lighter colors and darker colors. Okay, and so compos uh, balance is another thing to t take into consideration when you're talking about composition, is that you can also kind of divide your composition into halves, also or having equal amounts of uh, darkness and lightness in it. And by having those not perfectly aligned half and half, is that we add some dynamics or movements to our composition. So that's always something good to keep in mind. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at some uh, real-world examples of some of these elements of composition that we talked about. Okay, if I come over here into Photoshop, and we're going to kind of take a look at a movie poster here. Okay, and this is a poster for uh, Batman the Dark Knight, and it appears to be just some graffiti on uh, a wall here. And So we take our shapes that we have here and we've simply just got kind of a uh, rough textured circle that we've drawn here and uh, we've drawn another one over here and repeated it and suddenly and we drew a Batman symbol here and then when we look at these together and in proximity to each other they seem to form a face, a face of the Joker. And if we kind of kind of look at this slash of light that comes across here, the contrast against the background is that that makes this kind of area pop out, and if we kind of blur our eyes, suddenly we see the face of the Joker here on this composition. Okay, and we talk about texture here, and lightness and darkness here, and we have here these very dark kind of background here, but it gets lighter here, but we use this rough texture to give us all this contrast that makes this uh, kind of look like a more dark and sinister composition. And then another element that we've used is our choice of colors. By using an almost monochromatic theme with uh, the uh, blacks and the whites here, and then kind of throwing red in there. This is kind of a, almost a uh, you know classic horror, uh, very exciting uh, uh, composition, because we kind of think of terms of red being blood, and uh, it just uh, is very uh, strong if we're going to be uh, doing kind of dark or sinister type of uh, compositions. Okay, now if we take a look at our um, Dark Knight here and Why So Serious, these are similar typefaces, and you notice that these are all caps here, and they're white against the black or dark area there. And so these contrast, and these are the most important uh, foreground elements of our composition here, as so we have 
The Dark Knight, which is our most important information, the title of the movie. And then we kind of have our uh, catchphrase or slogan, Why So Serious? Okay. And the same thing if we you know, talk about uh, our, our poster for uh, the Student Video Expo, is the Student Video Expo is the most important piece of information. And Prime Cuts of Film is kind of our slogan, and it's kind of our next most piece of, uh, important piece of information. And then if we come down here, that 2008, you'll notice it has less contrast, it's a little bit darker, but size-wise it tells us that that's fairly important. And as we go down to these other pieces of information here, they become less contrasty, and they become less important in the composition. Let's go ahead and turn on some guides here that I have uh, that are mark out our thirds of our composition. And you can see, if I bring up these guides, that we're very close to our third line intersections here for where our eyes are in this composition. And uh, come down here and our Batman's nice, um, kind of on that third line. You'll see that we've got a blood drip that's right there on that third line, and one there. And it's kind of interesting if you kind of look at this, this the entire composition, how many places that you can find kind of that one-third to two-thirds ratio within the design. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at another poster for the same film and we'll see what we come up with here. Okay, here's a poster again for The Dark Knight, Batman, and we look at our third line intersection. Look at that. That's just like its crosshairs on Batman's head. And Obviously, if we look at this, this is contrasting most with the background, and it's our most important design element within this composition. So now I'm going to go ahead, and if you look at uh, the Joker behind here, now he's got a white face, yet he's kind of blending more toward the background because they've taken these whites and knocked down their value a little bit. And by using blurring here and having the sharpness here in the foreground and this blur that it recedes more towards the background. And that gives us our form and our depth within this uh, composition. Okay, and now if we look again at our title, is that we? The, if you look at that, that's got a subtle gra uh, gradient on it, uh, from light on the top to dark on the bottom again, to give it some more form. And you'll see that it uh, contrasts with the background, even when it's on this kind of bat with the glow around it. Is that they found a place for the letters where they're uh, contrasting against the dark background. And another thing, if we look at our rhythm that we have here, is look at the rhythm of these letters, how evenly spaced they are. And even the space is if you placed another letter in there, it would be exactly in the same rhythm of the space. So it's kind of boom, 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 ba, boom, 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 ba, boom, boom. It almost is musical when we look, across, uh, look at the, these letter forms as they go across the composition. And let's come up here and we kind of take a look at our uh, cast list here. And we've got the same thing as we've got a nice rhythm and alignment here. All these are aligned exactly the same height and distance from each other. And then we've got a rhythm there between them as we go across them there. And I mean, when we look closer here, is that we can uh, actually take a look at this and... Uh, they're exactly aligned here uh, on a horizontal line here. And then if you look here, the letter forms of the last names to the first names, we've got, again, the two-thirds to one-third height ratio. Okay, so these are uh, both conscious and subconscious elements of design. A lot of times people that just kind of have a feeling for design, these are the um, people actually are just kind of incorporating these rules whether they know it or not. And so uh, you can kind of do it consciously when, uh, or you can kind of uh, do it by feel. Okay, let's take a look at one more poster here for another film. And here we have Spider-Man. And if we look at our, what we, this is our most dominant third intersection here, which is the upper left. And I guess in the Western mind, it's kind of related to how we read and stuff like that. But notice where this third line crosses on this composition. Exactly in the center of the Spider-Man mask here. When then we have all these lines elements radiating out from this third line here. 
okay? And if we take a look at it the other way around, is that all these lines are converging onto this third line here, okay? And you can see that we take this line here, for example. Where does it converge? Right there to that upper third line. We take this line, and eh, not so much, but kind of in the general vicinity of that. And we can kind of take this composition and see that by it's using the rule of thirds very strongly here. And again, we kind of got a dark quadrant here, and it contrasts with a light quadrant here. Again, dark, light, dark, light, okay? And we're using those to, uh, to basically contrast and make this composition uh, contrasty and um, make our foreground element pop out. And so you can see that this glow almost around the back of Batman coming off of the glass of the building here uh, contrast against his, um, his costume here, and that makes him pop out more. And then, again, we got this foreground element here, which is our most foreground element, and it comes down on this one-third line intersection here. Okay, I hope that you enjoyed this lecture and learned a little bit about the elements of design and composition, and that you will use those in your poster design for this class.